All right, guys, let's start the morning off right with some traffic at the boat ramp. Someone decided to park in a spot that's hard to get around. No big deal. It's okay. We are moving now. Just if you're going to prep your boat, try to do it farther away from the ramp so other people can get by. Doing it right there is not the best spot. Just a little tip. Make it well liked at the boat ramp if you follow our tips. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. It's been a while since we've been able to get out. I'm excited to finally be out here. We're just kind of in the river. Gonna look for some Spanish mackerel. Uh, wind's supposed to lay down, so if it gets good, maybe we'll run off the beach. Cobia should be showing up uh, if they're not already here, so maybe we'll catch a cobia. But we're gonna start with some Spanish mackerel. Going out towards our jetties, uh, we saw a bunch of birds diving, so that can be a really good way to find Spanish. Sometimes there'll be bluefish or jacks underneath, but uh, give it a try and you'll, you'll probably catch something. So let's see what we can uh, find real quick. Okay, so the, the size spoons we're using right now are double up. And uh, like I said, we got two gold and one silver spoon out here. Uh, I've maxed it's two silver and one gold. Um, we're using a number one planer, the smallest planer they got. Got those uh, right out in the back of the boat probably about uh, 30 feet on each side 30 or one side 40 on the other and then uh, on our far out ones we got the gotcha we got that the farther out probably about 50 feet 60 feet and then we got the uh, other spoon with a uh, torpedo sinker on it we got it about probably 35 40 feet out so i'm trolling um i try to troll around four maybe five miles per hour if you're going against the current, it's going to seem like you're going slower with the current. You're going to be like blasting. The current's still running pretty good. Out, yeah. Um, pretty strong going out. See the birds in some places have been right there. Then. Yeah. We got a lot of boats by the jetties. Some aren't trolling, some are just regular fishing. So you want to make sure you still, you know, be respectful of them, give them plenty of space. Um, so we're going to see if we can get into the birds. Uh, structure is good. Um, tide rip's good. You know, if you see bait, uh, birds over bait. Um, Spanish mackerel can be on those glass minnows. Not, I mean, you'll find them on pogies too, but they can be on the smaller bait. Kind of just start out just kind of blind trolling the structure, you know, kind of areas we've caught them in the past, just around the jetties, you know, by the tip, and uh, kind of kind of move on from there based off of what we do. Uh, pay attention to your planers when you're trolling planers because when a fish hits it, you're going to see all of a sudden there's going to be a lot of pressure on the line and it's going to pop up even if they don't get hooked. You know, it'll, that's what it'll do, it'll pop up. So that'll be your clue. You know, anytime you're trolling with planers, if all of a sudden that's high in the water column and not much pressure, it means something hit it or got tangled or messed up. And at least you'll know to check it. If you think you got a hit, then just try to work that area. But you do got to pay constant attention to it. A lot of trolling, whatever it may be. Um, it's not something where you just throw out your lines and just chill with your friends, talk, um, have a drink, anything like that. It's I mean, you need to pay attention. It's kind of like if you're a hunter, you know, you don't just get up in your tree stand and, and chill. You should get up in your tree stand and, and be watching, you know, looking for for movement, movement. Okay. Same thing with fishing. You just I mean, you're looking for birds and potentially fish, but a lot of it is just watching what your rod tip does. And if you're trolling, you got a lot of rod tips, you need to, you know, have your team or whoever's back there running that cockpit. Definitely got some birds in the area. Birds could be over bluefish or uh, Spanish or jacks. Um, probably a good sign there is some fish. I am marking a little bit of scattered stuff on my depth recorder. Not totally sure what it is yet. That's cool. There aren't any birds or anything, but gold spoon. Uh huh. Gold spoon on the on the uh, planer. Planer. 
Well, that's good, guys. We uh, got our first one. Got the skunk off the boat. And more importantly, we got an idea where they're at. Alright, good John. Another Spanish. I think they're all over. I mean, they are at the tip, but we've also had some hits away from it. They're not the tip of one flat. Right, which is nice because it's not as crowded over here. That one looks a little bigger, too. Silver spoon. Silver spoon on that one. All the ones we've caught have been on the planers. And we've had the planers trip a couple times. So far, they like them deep, deep on the spoons, gold and silver. I'd say one thing that's important is um, be very um, aware of where you're at when you're catching these fish. Um, mark it on your GPS if you have to, because sometimes, because I mean, we've caught them in, in several spaces, a pretty large area, which is a good sign to me, because there's they're really scattered. You know, it's easier to get to them rather than all the boats being packed in one place. Uh, I think we had double. Uh, this one is definitely getting hit. Yeah, I got one here too. Yep. Oh uh, yeah, double. Uh-oh. Pretty good one right here. Oh uh, yeah, that's the one that's going to be more There we go guys, got our first double header. I was a little worried when we first started. We're running the bird out. <laughs> Gonna give the fish the bird, guys. Had a lot of success on the bird. And then so far the only thing I think is really consistent is they've all been deep on the planer. So it'll be interesting if they come up for the bird. So got another double header, which is really good. Seem to be kind of coming off the tip. So you know, there's a boat anchor out here. I've been kind of using it as a reference. Uh, and just consistently hitting the planer. So we're gonna put a third planer out, right? Cause if it's working, uh, you know, <laughs> keep doing it, do more of it. And we're gonna use our, uh, our rotating rod holders to allow us to spread. Normally <clears throat> you just run like one or two off, off the cleat cause it keeps them down. But I think if we use our rod holders, spread them out, we're gonna try doing three. Got one coming on the middle. Now that we're running three planers. Got one coming right up. We're hooked on our middle planer. I believe it was on our side just a few minutes ago. That one was wire, right? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Earlier, one thing our two planers had in common was they were both had mono straight to the spoon. Spanish do have sharp teeth. Um, and they could potentially cut that, but um, you know, a lot of times you can get away with mono on Spanish. Uh, thank you. you got one on that one, Dad? Right there? Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Where I stand by. Again, got them on the wire one. Mm, that's the second one in a row on the wire, isn't it? Yeah. Good news is, I think we figured out that, that little zone that they like. Because we've been consistently getting fish. A certain path coming past the jetties. Yeah. There you go. like a little better fish. Uh, yeah, this might be a bluefish. He's definitely stronger. Or a big Spanish. Or a big Spanish? Come on. Uh, Jack Trevelle. 
Trabali. Kind of tell when you get the bigger Spanish, the smaller ones, Spanish aren't built for power. Um, so once they trip the planer, you know, a lot of times the small ones will kind of come to the surface and you can see them. The bigger ones, or if you get like a blue fisher jack, they'll stay deeper. Um, so we definitely had a little bit better, bigger size on this last run through. You don't have to run planers necessarily, you could do downriggers like we do for kingfish and just flip a planer to that and still run, run fast. Planers are pretty cheap, but eight or ten bucks. Yeah, planers are cheap <clears throat> and easy to do. You can just take your normal inshore rods and reels, um, 15, 20 pound line, put a small number one planer, spoon, you know, it's real, real cheap, uh, kind of fish to target. You know, you can just troll for them. It's pretty, pretty relaxing. There he goes, there he goes. You're good for it, good for it. Pretty good one, man. Oh man. Dang. He's got something pretty good on. Hopefully when I just hung up. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, I don't know, maybe a big redfish, big drum, be my guess. It just hit a really tiny spoon. Get some ground. I feel like it might be on the bottom. I guess it's running now. That's like I can see his tail kicking. That's just a rod tip. Fish, guys. Oh, did he get off? Well, dang, guys. Dang, that was a big fish, whatever it was. Maybe a big red. Uh -oh. Dang, was that down deep or up top? I don't know, that might be on the rock more down a little bit. Yeah. More down? Yeah. I got it. I'm gonna loop around. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. We got two big fish back to back online. That was a gotcha, right? Is that what it was? Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't think that would have got all the way down to get hung. I got a boat come across so we don't cut us off. Okay, we're good. Oh, there he is. Come up. Jack. Big old Jack. Might have been one of the other ones, too. Yeah, maybe that's one of the other ones. Giant Jack. I say giant. We caught some freaking huge ones in another video. That? that huge one we got when we are fishing for Cobia. There you go. Uh, I think I another one hit over here too. Oh man. That was it guys. That was our biggest Spanish of the day. Sixteen and a half inches. Um that one yeah, wire, gold wire. So it doesn't seem to be the wire that's scaring them away. They all like it deep. For whatever reason.
early in the day but you know we've definitely I think gotten the pattern figured out for today go deep with planers and make this strip hit them right after it kind of comes up from the channel to the shallower depth and it's just been pretty consistent for us so it's going pretty smooth now all right guys so we wanted to just run down the beach um, see what we could see and, and we've, we've got the tide rip here as you can tell it's a very noticeable change between the uh, water coming out of the river and the ocean. Uh, there's foam kind of right along the line and obviously it's very brown water on one side and a much brighter green on this side. And my dad saw some Spanish hitting and we stopped and trolled and we can see how many you see on the camera. There's some bait right down there, right on this rip on both the dark and the green side. I can't quite tell what they are. Almost look like a little like valley hoop or needle bows. That's cool because sometimes um, manta ray will like literally go down this rip and it's like they're eating the foam. Like I'll see them literally like, just come up and suck in the foam. So we're kind of hoping we'll see a manta ray. But there's definitely Spanish around too and a lot of bait fish. This was uh, a little bit later on in, in the summer. Probably be a good spot for kingfish too. One thing too is with this rip, it's way far south where the wind's blowing out of the northwest. And it's probably what? Probably two miles from the, from the inlet, maybe. So the wind, northwest wind's got to push. Now if that wind's out of the southeast, it would be pushed all the way back the other way. So you can kind of tell what, what the dominant factor is right here with the wind and all. Wait, where am I going to start hitting and popping? Like this? Boom. Oh, you think that's them coming up bumping it? I think so, yeah. Oh, is he on there? Uh, bring him in. You want to check? Oh, boom. Oh, right on here. Jeremy, you got that one. Take that one. Bigger or not? Um, definitely some bait marking on my depth recorder, too. I can see it physically on the surface at the rip and on my depth oh, recorder. Fish on. Thanks. That was Hey guys, I think we finally got one on the gotcha. Yeah, so we caught most of our Spanish. It was kind of funny we came out here just to look around and the Spanish bite actually seems better out here than it did back at the jetties. Right on the rip. Definitely bigger, aren't they? Yeah. We're about for Uh, more over there. There's one over there. What's the drift? Gonna be cast out a couple times. The things are popping all around there. Aren't they? Yeah. I can see a uh, fish or bait or something flashing. Uh -huh. Right down the line there. Got a little trash on it. All right, guys. So we had a great day on the water. Caught a lot of Spanish mackerel. Um, overall, you know, it was a pretty cool bite. Uh, started at the jetties and did well, and then came out to this rip. Um, you kind of see behind me, and uh, they're actually biting better at the rip. Um, but you know, there's always that temptation to try to leaf fish to find fish. So we didn't do that. I'm glad we stayed. Even if we came out here and didn't find anything, we would have had a great day. But came out here found some more kind of a bonus uh, pretty cool to see the bait and the rip and of course there was a chance we could get a Kobe out here then it's today but it's still uh, a good place to fish so um, overall hope you guys enjoyed the video Spanish mackerel fun fish to catch and uh, pretty easy to get into good for uh, kids small boats whatever so if you have any questions about your setup or anything else in the video just comment below and we'll help you out as best we can Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Real Hazardous.